Okay guys, so today on the vlog, I kind of decided I would do something a little bit different. And I've been asked a few times about how I edit photos and it's not really something that I've normally kind of uh, included in the vlogs because uh, normally they're just about being out and kind of about the experience and stuff. So today I thought I would show you how I edit um, an astral image. So I'm not going to kind of go down the, the route of the tr tr traditional landscape, but I'm um, going to show you how I edit a Milky Way core image. Um, one of the things we find in our Astro workshops that I run with Tyler, we've kind of changed the format slightly this year and basically instead of just going out shooting and um, kind of have, spending hours out shooting and then just sending people home, we've kind of changed the format slightly and basically what we've done is we've, we've uh, we've kind of gone for like a more classroom environment. So we spent a few hours inside kind of teaching the basics, going over different settings, why we use the settings that we use before we even touch a camera. And then we'll go out and shoot for a couple of hours. But then once we've, we're finished, we'll actually come back in and actually teach people how to process their astro images. So, um, you know, once you've shot the image, um, that's only really part of it. It's there's so much importance needs to be placed on the actual processing of it. So um, we find that format has has worked really well for us. So I've kind of been asked a few times about how I would be processing images um, just by people that maybe haven't been on the workshop. So I thought I would do that today um, and just kind of show you how I would process an image just purely of the Milky Way core. Um, so I'm going to show you an image from uh, Cork that I shot um, last month, I think it was. Yeah, last month. Um, also, just to say a massive thanks to Skillshare um, for their continued support of the channel here. Um, basically, if you don't know who Skillshare are, they're an online community. Um, they basically have thousands and thousands of online classes and tutorials. And if you sign up for their premium membership, which I have done, um, you get unlimited access to all of those tutorials. And they're kind of covering loads of topics from photography to filming to um, Photoshop to Lightroom to SEO to marketing. There's such a massive amount of variety on there. And um, their annual subscription, I think it's something like less than $10 a month. But what they've kindly done is they've given me a little promo link. So for the first 500 people who sign up, um, you will get two months free membership. So I'm going to drop a little link um, for that promo uh, down in the video description below. So definitely please do go and check them out. Um, I know for myself personally, I find their stuff um, really, really helpful, uh, especially some of the stuff on the uh, the SEO and the marketing side of things. Um, so yeah, go, go and give those guys a little, um, a little check out. Okay, so basically the image we have here in front of us is an image I shot, as I say, down in West Cork. So, um, back last month, um, basically we were shooting in a sort of like a south easterly direction and uh, what we were getting is we were getting the Milky Way core actually rising um, out in the horizon, so amazing dark skies down there. Now what I do in my astro images now is I actually use a tracker, uh, which I'm not going to get into too much detail here now, um, I'll maybe do another video on that sometime, but basically instead of using your typical 20, 30 second exposures at a really high ISO, maybe something like ISO 6400, depending on how dark the skies are. What the tracker allows me to do is actually use a much longer exposure and obviously then reduce my ISO. So this image was shot um, 240 seconds um, of an exposure and it was shot at ISO 800. So basically that was instead of shooting at say 20 seconds at something like ISO 6400 or whatever. So we've got a much cleaner image here in front of us. The only downside um, with using the tracker is if you look down here at my foreground and the horizon line, it's um, obviously the foreground, this is actually a, um, a headland of cliffs. So it's all blurred because of the way it's tracking. Um, so what you need to always do is then switch the tracker off and then shoot a completely separate image for your foreground and then blend the two together afterwards in Photoshop. So um, basically I'm gonna disregard this whole area here. Um, and what I'm gonna focus on is obviously just the Milky Way core itself, because that's the whole point of, of the video, just to show you how I, um, how I capture it. This was shot on the Fujifilm X-T2. Um, absolutely love this camera for Astro. Uh, some of the colors and the, 
the details that it's pulling out um, is, is excellent and it's shot with the Samyang 12mm um, f2 lens. So normally um, this is all going to be based on Lightroom as well and it's going to be quite a quick edit so I'm going to try and keep it within about five minutes if possible. But basically normally I would work my way down the side here but what I'm going to do first of all just before I do that is actually I'm just going to turn the sharpening just right down to zero and I have enabled the profile correction for the, the Samyang 12mm and if I just untick it so that would have been it without the correction and that's it with it so you can obviously see the, the difference it makes just even with the a little bit of distortion and obviously the vignetting has kind of gone up in the corners here so normally that's one of the first things that I'll do and I'll also just check that in the Fuji um, one of the things I love is their, their camera profiles and I actually keep this set to the Provia prof profile so I just want to make sure that that's ticked down in there as well. So as I say we're going to work our way down and uh, the first thing then I'm going to be looking for is my white balance. Um, I've just let the, the camera shit auto but what I'm normally doing then is just going through and picking um, a few options just to see what kind of white balance that we can get. What I don't want to have the, the image is have it overly magenta. Um, so I kind of just want to be careful of that. And it's just a matter for me really of just playing about with this. You can obviously see the difference that it's making as you're making it cooler or you're making it warmer. So what I'm looking for is kind of somewhere in between. Um, obviously there's different ways of doing this, but this is kind of how um, this is how I, I, I like to work it um, and obviously no two images are going to be the same so I'm going to leave it around about there um, just going to give this a slight strain um, just to see what we're working with here um, okay so once I have the white balance set um, then I'm just going to work my way down this way here and um, the exposure I'm just going to brighten it up slightly uh, just for the, the overall of the image. A lot of the stuff I will be doing is actually going to be um, selective adjustments. So I'm going to be using the brush tool and the radial tool to actually purely just edit this area here. The, a lot of the, the rest of the, the stars um, I'm not overly going to worry about. And obviously this area here is going to be completely removed and, and blended with another image. Um, so all I'm doing then is just making a few global adjustments to, to the image. Um, normally whenever I start to edit Milky Way it's going to be the contrast, it's going to be highlights, whites, blacks, clarity, that sort of thing that I'm going to be adjusting. Um, I find this, this kind of works quite well um, for how I like to process my images. Obviously everybody is going to be slightly different but you can see even by just moving the blacks and whites how big a difference it does make to some of these dust lanes and stuff in the, the actual Milky Way core. Um, okay, so I think adjustment wise for the whole image that is probably going to that is going to do me. So what I'm going to do is go in and get the radial tool here. I'm going to just pull um, a selection that's going to be roughly the shape of the Milky Way. Now I'm just going to reset this here. One of the things I would do then is actually invert it so that all we're actually affecting is what's inside of this and not what's outside of it. And then the filler I normally leave quite high um, just so that the transition we have is going to be quite a smooth um, effect. So it's not going to look really obvious where we've got this line around it. Um, so this is going to be the edited section and up here is going to be, uh, it's not going to be affected at all. So again, controls I like to, to play about with is going to be the contrast, it's going to be the whites and blacks. So again I'm just having a little bit of a play here. One of the things I like to do is leave it quite subtle and um, see so it's kind of very easy to just go overboard with it. And I'm just going to play about with the clarity here and a tiny little bit of D here. So you can see the massive if you were to go crazy on it, it's going to look like that or it's going to just go completely washed out. So um, please be very, very, very subtle with with this. Okay, so if I just turn that off and on, you can see it's just made a little bit of a tweak. Um, what I would tend to do is actually um, 
put loads of leaves on top of each other so I do a little bit then make a new selection do a little bit more then make a new selection and do a little bit more I tend to find that that's a really good way of editing it um, and then if you find that you've maybe um, gone too far you can always just remove one of them so what I'm going to do as well I'm going to go into the uh, brush tool and what I'm going to focus on here is going to be these dust lanes along here the darker ones so what I'm what I like to use for them is playing about a little bit with the blacks and then playing about a little bit with the dehaze so I'm going to start with the dehaze and I'm just going to adjust my brush size and basically all I'm doing is painting on just over the areas that are the black lanes again just over here as well now what you can see then as I start to slide the dehaze till you can see that it's only affecting these areas here so it's not affecting anything else up the middle part that I haven't selected so this is what I like to do is just to go in and start to play about a little bit with the sliders and um, you can also adjust the blacks as well you can see as I take them into the negative that they start to stand out more or if you take them into the positives they start to kind of wash out to more of a grey a grey colour so we're, we're kind of just being really subtle here um, then what I'll do is I'll take a new brush and I'll do the opposite and I'll go for the whites so I'll go just for the brighter section so the area is down in here and right up through these little bits and again I can't stress enough subtlety is key here you really have to be subtle with it because personally I've seen so many images um, you know on social media and on Instagram and like the Milky Way has just been edited to death um, and while that might appeal to some people personally for me it doesn't it doesn't really do it for me it's um, I just think it looks um, it looks too thick so again I'm just playing about with the with the white slider here uh, maybe add a little bit more clarity doesn't really affect it too much there maybe about the there and hit done so I'm going to show you just a before and after so if you look here this is the before so this is what we started out with basically off camera and this is after so there's quite a difference there already and that's just been a few minutes of basically just pulling in some detail and some editing in this area here um, is quite significant okay so what I might go back in and do is use another radial adjustment and I'm just going to make another little fine tune to this I'm going to add a little bit more saturation in as well I just reset all of these here uh, I'm just going to bring the saturation up a little bit you can see the colors especially down along the bottom the, the section of the the core that's nearest the horizon and um, you can kind of see those oranges and yellows really um, beginning to uh, get a bit of oomph as I, as I increase the saturation but I don't want to go over the top and um, one of the things as well with the Fuji is that it, it captures some lovely pink and purple nebula um, which is excellent as well uh, and it's nice to get a little bit more color in there so I'm just going to leave it maybe about there bring that out a little bit more and then what I'm going to do just to give the uh, the overall um, bit of the core a little bit more sharpness I'm just going to play about a little bit with clarity and maybe a little bit more with the whites um, just to kind of lift it slightly and I think for this one that's pretty much all I would do so there's my before there's my after obviously one of the things I can't stress enough is that it's so important to get to dark skies for images like this here and um, I have shot it in uh, slightly 
light polluted areas with a, a filter, a light pollution filter on. And it, it has helped, it certainly has helped um, a bit to, to retain, retain detail and stuff, but there's absolutely nothing beats actually getting to dark sky. So try and find yourself a location that um, it's gonna be really, really dark. Um, and hopefully that you're shooting, to, uh, shooting into darkness as well helps massively too. Um, so that's a really, really quick um, edit of how I would edit the Milky Way core. Um, that's obviously all just done purely within Lightroom. Now obviously you could take it into Photoshop and refine it a wee bit more. Um, if I was actually doing this as an image, I probably would have spent a little bit more time, um, especially down and around all these dust lanes and stuff. But it's just to give you a really quick overview that you've maybe got some images, but you're not sure uh, what to do with them or how to process them. So hopefully that's a start. Um, if you would actually be interested in maybe a few more uh, little vlogs like this, please do let me know in the comments below because obviously I'm, most of my vlogs, as I said, have been um, revolved around the adventure, the kind of being out and kind of behind the scenes um, in the field. So uh, maybe you would like to see a little bit more post-processing. Right. Maybe you wouldn't, that's fine. Uh, as I say, if you would let me know in the comments below, I would really appreciate it. So another little thing is just, uh, if you do like the content, please do hit the subscribe button. Um, I'm sure you're probably inundated with people asking you to subscribe to their channels, but um, one of my goals for this year is really to grow the, um, the YouTube channel and obviously to be producing better content. So if you would subscribe, it would help me immensely. I'd say a massive thanks to Skillshare just for sponsoring um, today's video and obviously for their continued support. Um, I really do appreciate it. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll see you in the next vlog.